Hello, in the first two parts of this video series we tested plastic potter type ball, a 40mm ball and an old 38mm ball in terms of their physical differences and how they performed under some basic control tests for rebound speed, bounce and spin. And in the third part of this video series we're going to test what four Preston Table Tennis's Premier Division players thought about these balls in terms of their one, size, two, spin, three, sound, four, feel, five, speed, six, bounce, seven, control or consistency, eight, preference. Tony Rigby is one of our head coaches at Preston Table Tennis and has won more Preston Championship titles than any other player in our league's history. Tony is a control attacking player who uses inverted rubber on his forehand and short pimples on his backhand. Billy Russell is a defender who chops away from the table off both wings and who will attack with his forehand. Billy plays for our current Premier Division champion St Austins and uses inverted rubber on his forehand and long pimples on his backhand. Adam Linton is an aggressive spin attack counter hitter who uses inverted rubber both sides and Kieran Bezik is a fast attack counter hitter who also uses inverted rubber both sides. Both Kieran and Adam represent our league in matches against other leagues in the north west of England. Now all four of these players have had experience of playing in the 38mm area and the current 40mm one so they've got a good idea of how those two balls play but let's see what they think about how they compare to this plastic prototype. Now concerns have been expressed about the durability of this ball quite often people have said that it cracks or breaks very easily so this time we had to change the way I actually do the filming instead of having the table horizontal to the actual blue curtain so you can see the ball better I've had to have it vertical or parallel with the actual wall in the background which is a slightly lighter blue so apologies if the ball is harder to see you'll also notice that behind one end of the table there's also the plastic barriers so there's protection for the ball at both ends of the table one size we already know from our testing in the first of the video series that this prototype ball is a little bit bigger than this current 40mm ball but would the players be able to tell any difference? Okay, what about visibility? Did you find that ball easier to see than you one? Yeah, only because it's a lot bigger. Bigger. <laughs> Could you actually tell the difference between all three? Yeah, you can yes. see the difference in size. Even between the 40mm? Yeah, you can see it yeah. in your hand. Results. All the players felt the prototype ball definitely looked bigger when playing with it. Now in Sydney, after the 2000 Olympics, the ITTF changed this 38mm ball and we started to use the current 40mm one and it was done to improve television viewing, making it bigger so it was easier to see. But what they got with this 40mm ball was one that was still within the tolerances allowable within Technical Leaflet T3 but which was smaller than 40mm. This one measured just approximately 39.66. But as Adam Shahara said on the One of a Kind Table Tennis Forum, to switch from celluloid to plastic and the resulting change in the manufacturing process has coincidentally allowed the ITTF to also amend the tolerances for the diameter of the plastic ball upwards. So what they're getting with this prototype, a ball 40mm or slightly more, is what was originally intended for this ball, even though that's still within the tolerances. And just as an experiment, I actually filmed these balls and you can see the videos here where I'm comparing the prototype ball and the current 40mm ball but can you guess which one or which video left or right is the 40mm ball and which is the prototype? See if you can find one of these easy to actually see. Two, spin. In our test in the second video it appeared that more spin could be generated with the current 40mm ball compared to the prototype. But which of the three balls did our players think was the spinnier or the one that they could generate the most spin with? Which did you prefer? Which did you find you could generate more spin with? Uh, the smaller of the ball. 38mm. That's 38mm. Didn't, yeah, the 38 was spinnier, but there wasn't a, I didn't think there would seem to be a great deal in it spin wise. Well, the first, the first small ball actually got more spin on the ball, it stayed lower when you chopped it. And we had better relish with that one. Yeah. When it hit the floor, the more spin came back on the ball. So you thought the 40mm ball was spinning? Yeah, we did. Yeah. What about the 40mm in the new ball? Much the same, spin-wise. 
Same with Let's just get over the get over the sound of it. Results. The players could generate more spin with the 38mm ball, but they didn't think there was a lot of difference between the current 40mm one and the prototype. 3. Sound. Now the difference in sound between these balls, prototype one there, current one there, is often remarked upon when you're seeing or hearing reviews about this particular type of ball, with it sounding tinny or broken. Let's see what our players thought. Okay, going on to the sound, what did it sound like? The new sounds like a broken egg. Yeah, it sounds broken. Sounds, sounds broke. The thing that put me off is the sound, because we're not used to it. <laughs> okay, that's the new bit. Yeah, it sounded tinny. Broken. Tinny, yeah, we could say that. Yeah, it just made a, it made a strange sound, so it didn't, didn't feel right. And did that affect you again? No, I don't think so. Once you got it's just, this one, they think you just block it out, wouldn't you? Okay. Same thing as well. You've got it. Obviously, you've got to concentrate whilst you're playing. But I, I would find it hard. Did you get used to that? You got used to uh, the I, bigger ball after the smaller ball, so I don't see I why. I think so. Right. It did sound like a pop ball. Obviously, not. It's not hot. But I think you can definitely get used to that. Results. This was something all the players agreed upon. The prototype ball does sound different. It sounds broken or popped, which can be off putting until you get used to it. 4. Feel. Now, feel is a very personal thing, but I was still interested to see if the players would notice a difference between the prototype, the current ball, and the 38mm ball. Possibly because the prototype ball seemed to be softer when we did the testing in the first video. This is what they said. Okay, from the viewpoint of feel, is there a difference in feel? I, I thought if you drop the ball short with the new ball, it was a lot easier. But feel-wise, actually, contact on the blade and the rubbers. The but when you were playing a drop shot, but when you were playing top spin, I thought the feel was a little bit, a bit hazy, to be honest. With the new ball, yeah. did they feel any different? Yeah, um, a lot softer. The, the 38 feels quicker, it's harder, it comes off the back quicker. Okay, did you feel any difference in the smoothness of the balls, or the hardness of the balls? Or? I don't know, mate. Just the grip on the blades, really, and the rubbers. So the grip on the blades was better with the smaller ball? Or the I thought ball? so, yeah. yeah. Better with the smaller ball? Yeah. Probably, me and Billy have probably played with that ball for 30 odd years, and then 15 years or whatever with this new ball, so... Results. All the players could follow a difference with the feel of the balls with a 38mm feeling harder and giving better grip. 5. Speed. In our test in the second video, where each ball was fed onto rubber sheets at a slow pace, the prototype ball had the faster rebound speed, which surprised me. But what about in live play, where these balls would be hit a little bit harder, or in reality a lot harder than I was doing? Would the prototype still seem faster, or is that only something that happens when you actually use very little pace or little power in the shot? Okay, what about speed ball? It's a little bit faster as well, yeah. small ball. Yeah, but it goes yeah. through the air, there's no air going over the top of the ball, it seems to go through faster. So you thought the 38mm was The small faster. ball was a bit faster, yeah. The 38 feels quicker, it's harder, it comes off the back quicker, possibly a bit spinnier. The 40 that we use now is a noticeably slower than that, coming off the back, and the new one was slower still, really slow. What about the difference between the 40mm three star and the prototype? Well, I thought the, the normal ball that we're playing with now was just a little bit faster than the prototype. I thought the prototype was a bit slower and stood up a bit more. So do you think there's going to be longer rallies with, the, with this new yeah. one? Yes, definitely. Because it's We slower. were there and we're having a quick bang, 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 bang. A rat attack rally. We shouldn't go beyond three shots each if we're both playing really well. And it was going up forever. Yeah. And you're hitting it full pelt and it's just... And it feels like you've got time to play your shots. Loads of time. So points could last indeterminately. They'll have to bring back extra diet. <laughs> For loopers. So were your rallies shorter or longer with the prototype? It seemed to be shorter, to be honest. With the new ball they were shorter? Yeah, it seemed to be short. Longer than the... Or about the same as the normal ball. But the rallies were longer with the smaller ball. 
wrong with the snowball? Yes. That's a complete opposite to Kieran and uh, Adam. We're attacker defender. Whether that makes a difference or not, then. Results. So all the players, regardless of their style or equipment used, said the prototype ball was the slowest. And this was something that they kept coming back to during the interviews, the speed of this prototype ball. It really did stand out for them, or to be exact, the lack of speed. 6. Bounce. In our tests in the video, we showed that the prototype ball bounced more than the 38mm one, but less than the current one. Would our players notice a difference in real play? Bounce was similar in, not similar in all of them. If it, it feels a little bit... Probably a bit more of a bounce in the 38. It's just a bit quicker. That's where it felt anyway. Yeah. What about the bounce to the new, with the old 38mm? Was that higher or lower? There wasn't a lot in it between the two balls, was it? The, 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 the smaller ball kept lower. Okay. So you don't think the new one bounced? Mm, no, I don't think it does bounce much. Kieran? I thought it bounced alright. Much, so not much difference. You know, you've got it slightly, it's slightly like the tremendous amount of difference with the spin or the bounce. Results part one. Interestingly, whilst all the players thought that the bounce was similar for the current ball on the prototype in terms of the height reached, there was a difference of opinion about the height the 38mm ball bounced. Both Adam and Kieran, who are aggressive attackers, felt the 38mm ball bounced higher. Tony, who's a controlled attacker and believes a defender who chops, thought the 38mm ball bounced less. Now I don't know if that's because Billy chops the ball a lot and the height of the chop kept low with the 38mm ball, or it might be for another reason. Let's see, because I actually analysed the footage where the players were using each of these balls, tracked the flight of the ball, and then as you can see in the overlay, you'll notice a difference in how the ball bounces, and in particular, the arc. Not so much of the prototype, but at the 38mm ball. There are a couple of things to notice. First, when I overlay the footage over each other, the ball actually seems to bounce highest with the 38mm ball, which would seem contradictory to our earlier tests which showed the 38mm ball bouncing the least. But look at the arc on the ball, the way it rises higher and dips quicker. It's significantly more noticeable with the 38mm ball than either the current 40mm one or the prototype. What about the difference between the 40mm freestar and the prototype? Well, I thought the, the normal ball that we're playing with now was just a little bit faster than the prototype. I thought the prototype was a bit slower and stood up a bit more. I found the, uh, the new ball easy to chop. Um, you could actually hack the ball a bit harder. It sort of fly off as much as the, the ball we previously used. Um, also, the, the new ball bounced up an awful lot. When you hit it, and it was blocked by Tony, the ball came back and skidded up, strangely enough. Okay. And that's something that I noticed when I actually had a knock with this after the filming had finished. It wasn't so much the speed for me, it was the fact that this ball seemed to come through okay quite slowly, but when it bounced, it kicked up, or skidded up at me to be more exact. It didn't do that arcing which I was expecting, and that threw me time enough. Not a particularly nice feeling. Results part two. Billy and Tony felt that the ball bounced up at them, but yet skidded through. Now what this also seems to show is the problems that you get if you just measure a vertical bounce where you're dropping a ball. You've got to consider how a ball will bounce with respect to forward velocity and the actual spin on it, hitting and kicking. Just looking at a bounce when you drop it like that isn't necessarily going to give you a true reflection of how it performs when you play table tennis, purely because of the spin and the speed that's going to be on that ball. You've got to factor them in. 7. Control Consistency Now with this prototype ball being slower, I wondered if it would have some effect on the player's ability to control it, because that's one of the comments that are being made, in a way that this ball dumbed down the game, because it takes a little bit of spin away and a little bit of pace away, makes it easier to actually play with. So would any of the players notice a difference? in terms of control between these three balls. I asked Tony and Billy after they had a try, but this time instead of concentrating on their inverted, they used the pimple grubbers. This is what they had to say. Okay, from the viewpoint of using the pimples, 
Did you find there's a difference between the three balls? Is this what you were using short pimples? Yeah. yeah. And even when I do my forearm with a bastard, short pimples I could push it and hit it quite easy. Uh, but, but when I pushed it with a smaller ball, I tended to push it. I had to watch it because I tended to push it off because it was a bit faster. What about the difference between the three star ball and the prototype? Not much. Yeah. Not much. But I, the new one, I pushed better, it seemed to push better with that. So I went drop into a routine. You thought you had more control with the new one? Seemed to. Why do you think that is? No idea. And what about the aggressive attacking players, Adam and Kieran? Uh, the, the difference with, with, with the actually with the new ball, I find that it's you've got, you're, you're waiting for it to come through. You know, it's, so, all, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right for consistency because obviously you're waiting for the ball. You know, you, you, you can actually wait for the ball to come through. But if you're waiting to do a quick shot to kill the ball, it's like you're waiting that split. Mini, you know, I've split five seconds. I had more control with the new ball. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I had more control. So I had more time on the ball to play the strokes, get in position. Um, when you're pushing the ball short, you never touch it. It's easier. This is with a prototype. With a prototype. And that's compared to the, the small ball or the four, uh, three starts of ball. The small ball stays a lot lower. The chocolate it stays lower. Results. The players felt the prototype ball would give more control and consistency, but Adam felt the slowness of the ball coming through was something he didn't like, especially when he was trying to kill the ball. Now at the start of this three-part video series, we referred you to the ITTF's technical leaflet T3, which specifies what the ITTF is testing for and what they're looking for in these balls. This is what it had to say. The committee is prepared to accept a compromise which makes an approval possible if playing characteristics are similar or identical to those of currently approved balls. And it's this similarity, or if they played identical between these two balls, that we were trying to test for in our videos. So let's round up what we found. The bounce height was felt to be similar, and the amount of spin our players could generate was similar. But in others, there were noticeable differences. The way the prototype actually bounced on contact with the table and came through to a player is different with these balls. They sound different. They feel different when contact is made with the bat, and most noticeable of all, the prototype ball is slower. So what we've found is that there are definite differences in how this plastic one-piece prototype plays compared to the current celluloid ball. And there's been a little bit of concern about how they'd affect the game, which one would people prefer. So I asked the players, which of these three balls did they prefer to play table tennis with? Did you have a preference? 38. 38. Because? Quicker. You're not waiting for the ball to come through. So the 38 is faster for you? Faster. And would you have a preference? Smaller ball. He likes a smaller ball, I'm quite happy with the, the one we're playing with now. Result. So our aggressive spin and power attackers, who like spin and speed, both preferred the 38mm ball. But surprisingly, so too did our defender. Possibly because the 38mm ball gave him more to work with and kept lower when he was chopping it. Whereas our controlled attacker, Tony, preferred the current 40mm ball. So to a degree at least, the style that you actually are will probably determine which of these balls you would prefer. But ironically, none of them preferred the plastic prototype. One was the celluloid, three were for the old 38mm ball. And now the $64 million question. Would the fact that none of the players preferred the plastic prototype ball mean that they're packing the game? They'd stop playing? So, it, does it bother you that they're bringing the new ball? I thought it's a matter of the, if they have to bring it in, they have to bring it in. It's not going to stop the play. Same even? It's exactly the same sense. We've only just got to get on with it and swallow it all. Okay, so if they brought in this new ball, would you be disappointed? Would you carry on yeah. playing? I, I would be disappointed. Carry on playing, but why? There's no need, is there? It's pointless. But I, I mean, I would have to carry on playing. So you can see, none of our players would stop playing if the ITTF and the 
National Table Tennis Association, in our case the English Table Tennis Association, insisted on using this plastic prototype. It wasn't the preferred option, but it wouldn't stop them playing. 10. Concerns or other comments? To finish with, I asked the players if they had any other concerns or comments or any other opinion about the plastic prototype ball. Were they surprised by it? Okay, did this test allay any fears or any concerns? Or? Well, it did, it did probably. It was early days, yeah, it was a bit of time. It didn't involved. concern, it wouldn't concern at the moment. Have a go against somebody who, who blocks it, somebody who, who looks at it. I think playing with two different balls all this season is going to allow people to turn around and say, I don't like the new ball, I the old ball. For me, I think it's, if you're going to go and tell me that you eventually got to play the new ball, you may as well do it straight away. Certainly, you turn your ball, you must make a decision and say, this season, you've got to play with it. Did it surprise you in any way? No. They're just trying to make everything slower, aren't they? It's like people who stop playing eventually, they'll lose a load of players because it's, if it's too slow, it, it levels it too, it levels the playing field too much, doesn't it? So how the ball is going to be introduced by your national association was a major concern that the players seemed to have. With the feeling being that you couldn't really play with both these balls at the same time. It just wasn't feasible. There would have to be a fade in, cut off, then you just use that one ball for the competitive matches. They didn't want a situation where you could turn up a match and your opponents could choose to play with either of these. So it needs sorting out. Conclusion. So in conclusion, although we've identified differences between these two balls, plastic prototype, 40mm solo ball, all our players would carry on playing, just like they played through the 38mm ball being replaced by the current 40mm one, the 11-up scoring system being introduced, speed glue being banned, frictionless long pimples being no longer authorised and the use of water-based tuners and boosters being prevented. Now there are a number of ongoing discussions on table tennis forums around the world talking about not just how these balls perform but the legal merits or how the decisions were made, what the motivation is for bringing in this plastic prototype, whether or not there really is a, a worldwide ban on celluloid or, or if there's problems with manufacturing, why the tolerances had to change whole list of things and if you're interested in that type of stuff then I suggest you get on the uh, internet and have a look at some forums. But it also has to be stressed that what we've been testing by its very nature is a prototype ball, it's not the finished product. And already in the past month or so reports have been coming through that they're not going to necessarily go with just the one piece ball, plastic ball, but there's also a two piece ball being there trialled at the moment. So does that mean that the review you've just seen is useless because we'll never see this ball? Well, this is a quote from Madame Shihara, as recent as December 2012. Again, I've taken it from the One of a Kind Table Tennis Forum. Listen to what he has to say. In order not to limit ourselves to only one type of ball and be at the mercy of one manufacturer, price, availability, etc., we are encouraging all manufacturers to produce polyballs of all sorts, including with seams, the same as the current celluloid technology. This will create more competition and keep the prices under control, so we may have both the seamless and with seam volleyballs in 2014. This is good news. Regarding the celluloid balls, we will keep them as part of our rules as long as there is a supply. However, it would seem that the current manufacturers of polyballs may stop production in mid-2014. Regardless of the material of the ball, the ITTF will maintain its strict approval tests and methods for balls to ensure top quality for the users. I hope this clarifies the matter. Adam Sherrera. Or to put it another way, thanks to the ITTF, by mid-July 2014, we may or may not have three types of ball. Two with seams, one without. Two made of plastic, one celluloid. Two with a minimum tolerance of 40 millimetres, maybe, and one with a minimum tolerance of 39.5 millimetres. We're going to have sufficient supply of celluloid balls to this date, maybe. The balls may or may not play the same. But we'll probably have a new wave of table tennis equipment, specifically designed for the new plastic balls, so we can all go out and have the option to buy new equipment and have perhaps two or three bats in our bags, so we can play whichever bat we want, depending on what our opponents choose to use. That's much clearer. Thank you, ITTF. Now in the meantime, how do we find out about these balls? Adam did say on the One of a Kind Table Tennis Forum that he expected to see production of the prototypes coming forward 
in around first half of 2013. But when I checked the current authorised ball list from the ITTF, which runs from January to December 2013, I couldn't see any new balls on that edition. So if they are going to come in, they're going to have to amend that particular authorisation list. So if we're going to struggle to get hold of these balls to test, how do we find out more information? Well again, I refer you back to a post that Adam made on the One of a Kind forum, when he was talking about national associations and the roles that they have to play in this. I hope that these explanations meet with your satisfaction. Remember that if you are a member of your national association, you should normally be fully informed of the above brief explanation, so it is an advantage to be a member of your national association. So I'll ask you a question. How many of you have been contacted by your national association and advised of the introduction of this plastic prototype ball? Or given the opportunity to try one out? Or been consulted about how the balls are going to be introduced? These are coming in mid-2014. We're now in 2013. We haven't got long left. So if you want more information, follow Adam's advice. And if you have heard from your national association what they're going to do, please post below on the comments or on a table tennis forum and share that information. Because right now, there's not a lot of it about, not that I can find, certainly not from national associations. Thank you for watching.